Hi guys, it's Alex 110. How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. This video is going to be a rundown, thoughts and feelings of everything I wore in September. I sampled many new things. I wore a different perfume every single day. 95% of them were samples that I'd never tried before. So without further ado, let's just get to it because there's, there's 30 perfumes to talk about, okay? On the 1st of September, I wore Athoniel Rosa by Diptyque. This has become my favorite fragrance from the brand entirely. It's an ultra modern rose perfume with lots and lots of pepper, not much sweetness and vetiver. They made it in conjunction with an artist called Jean-Michel Athoniel, it's his surname. And unfortunately it's limited edition, but it's still available at time of recording. Very tenacious, very strong, very long lasting, and just really, really nice modern rose. On the second, I tried a perfume by a brand called Kohina, I think. It's called Diamond Begum Kohina, something like that. The name will be in the video, don't worry. This one was a huge disappointment for me. It was a very basic vanilla perfume, which didn't feel like it had real vanilla in it. It was a smooth, vanillin kind of ethyl malto basic ice creamy vanilla with not much character it did last a long time but i wouldn't i wouldn't try it again or buy it unfortunately on the third i wore boulevard 34 saint germain the eau de toilette version by diptyque the white lid this one is something that i own as a bottle i can't actually remember why i didn't sample that day life gets in the way sometimes Huge fan of this perfume as well. Wanted it in my collection for two or three years at least. It's a great blackcurrant leaf perfume with a springtime floral feeling. I think there's a bit of cardamom in there and it's meant to be a snapshot of the way Diptyque boutiques smell in their entirety. And it's really, really good. I really like it. Maybe not the weather for it now, but it's definitely a really interesting one for spring when that comes back again. On the fourth, I wore Terpsichore by Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab. I really enjoyed this one. It is a floral blend by them. Not one of the most amazing Black Phoenix perfumes I've tried, but I really did enjoy the multi-floral feeling of it. It's a sweet pea, apple blossom, palmarossa, little bit of vanilla, iris as well thing going on. And it was quite smooth. It felt almost like petals in vanilla. Very smooth, but not hugely remarkable. So that was the one I wore on the fourth. On the fifth, I wore Oud Jean by Fragrance Dubois. This is a brand that I'm trying to get to grips with. I am aware that their price tags are very high and I haven't really liked many of the ones I've tried. This one was very surprising and not in the best way. First of all, where was the oud? This was a huge plasticky tropical fruit type smelling perfume that was very overbearing and overbearing can be good in perfume, but this one is overbearing, not in the best way. It kind of felt like suntan lotion or tropical Hawaiian tropic sort of product, you know, something you'd put on your skin when you're in the sun and it was overly fruity and quite choky so i didn't really get on with that one and i didn't really feel oud at all in that one either that was a fail on the sixth i wore match by der duft a german niche brand that i actually really like i own two of their perfumes this one and i own one called pride this one was made by prin lomros who's one of my favorite perfumers this one is very much prin style it is a foresty perfume there's a lot of coniferous greenery going on and then there's a really big animalic note going on as well i'm not sure what that is but it's sometimes piney notes can feel dirty in that way so this was a very citrusy lead perfume as well. The citrus has managed to stay on my skin for the whole time that I wore it. And I'm just gonna like anything by Prin really, pretty much, it's, it's sort of a given. So Match by Der Duft, animal hiding behind a tree waiting to pounce on you. On the seventh, I wore Orlo by Mendita Rosa. This is an Italian brand that have very exquisite and extravagant bottles. I own one of their perfumes and it's one of the best ambers I've ever tried, but this is one of their new ones, Orlo. And while it started out quite well, it's mainly centered around Neroli. It kind of fizzled out a little bit for me and because their prices are so high, I expect a little bit more. They do make some amazing perfumes, but this one was a fail. It was a soft, simplistic kind of Neroli perfume and that's pretty much all I can say. On the eighth, I tried Betwixt and Between 
by Anka Kuss. This unfortunately solidified the deal for me that I'm not really gonna get on with this brand. This one was a smoky rose. The rose for me though kind of felt a little bit empty. Uh, there was supposed to be an ambery feeling to it as well. So smoke, rose and amber, I was thinking, oh, this is gonna be quite good. But really there was just something missing. It didn't have a spark for me. And that was probably the fourth or fifth fragrance that I've tried from the brand. I really wanted to like them more. I like the bottle designs. I think the ideas are cool, but this one failed on me, unfortunately. No detriment to the brand, I just didn't get along with it at all. Kind of transparent rose with a, a smokiness and not much amber, so had to move on. The next one I tried was Floss Mortis and this one's by Rogue Perfumery. This guy operates on Etsy mainly and he does make fragrances a little bit outside of IFRA regulations. So this is a tuberose, a tuberose perfume that I was excited to try. It has a very vintage throwback, bold tuberose feeling. Not much sweetness in the beginning, but it, it gave me poison-esque feelings when I wore it just without the plum and the incense. Just really about a kind of fracas, you know, by Robert Piguet, a little bit like that and ended up going very sweet. So that one also failed on me. I liked the opening and how brash it was, but then we just descended into Ah, uh, it does feel like a lot of other tuberose perfumes. So, another fail, unfortunately. On the 10th, I tried Nefertiti by Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab, another Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab perfume. This one, looking at the notes, I was really excited about. It's a myrrh, it's a sandalwood, and it says a breath of North African herbs. Unfortunately, this one was another fail. This one was very unremarkable for me. I've said before about Black Phoenix that, that it's like a sea of perfume and you have to really hook one in and you have to discover quite a few to find out the ones that are going to work for you and this one I didn't really like. It was kind of flat and it felt a lot like a lot of other Black Phoenix perfumes so it got lost for me. I can barely remember it. On the 11th I wore Junkie by Jardins Derivant. I can't remember why but this is actually a bottle. It wasn't a sample. I own this perfume. I've wanted to review this perfume for three or four years but I just haven't. No one talks about it. It to me is a very, very special fragrance. It is mainly about frankincense, but there is hemp in there, there's violet, there's gardenia, it's a little bit mossy. It's kind of a cross between a fougere, also kind of chipre-like as well, but very light, clean and airy, elegant fragrance, which doesn't get enough love. I think it's fantastic and it's easily one of my favourite fragrances. Can't remember why, where, why I wore it, but I did and I enjoyed it as usual. The next one was Oud Rouge by Fragrance Dubois, another one. I had two samples from the brand, so I made a point of trying both of them in September. This one actually was pretty good. The price, not so good. But this one, when I tried it, I thought, oh, okay. I can get along with this one. This is my favorite one that I have tried from the brand. This one I could actually feel the oud in. This one has rose in it as well. I mean, rose oud, it's like cheese and pickle. You always find it. It was a bit fruity. There was geranium, slightly ambery, and it felt a lot more spicy than I was expecting. So for me, it almost felt like it could have had carnation going on. Maybe it was the geranium with something else. I don't know, but I liked it. It was kind of spiky and a little bit dark and not overly oody and the oud that was in there felt nice it didn't feel dirty or skanky or animalic so that was a thumbs up for me from the brand and one of the only ones that i've actually liked on the 13th i wore vetiver dance by andy tower i did have a little bunch of samples of his i've done a spotlight on them but i fully wore them this time and this one was cool it's Vetiver done in an Andy Tower style. I always say where he really shines is when he uses resins and incensey things and maybe a little bit of smoke and spice. So it was nice to try a Vetiver by him. It's a very rich one. It's a full bodied, nutty Vetiver that is for Vetiver lovers. It really just showcases the material very well. It has a bit of clary sage in there. It felt slightly aromatic in the opening, but it just descended into a very smooth, you know, manageable, wearable, but deep vetiver smell. On the 14th, I tried out Sherwood by Molinard. And I remember trying this when I went to Grass for the first time. They had just released this line of fragrances and they were on this plinth 
lit from underneath and they were shining like the heaven was on them. And I remember trying it at the time, but this time I actually had a sample and I wore the whole thing. It was a basic woody fragrance with some oud in there. It felt kind of like it was aimed towards the Middle East. Nothing really stuck out. It just smelled woody to me and mainly oud. Kind of characterless, but it was okay. I wouldn't try it again and I wouldn't buy it. On the 15th, I wore Dolor 2 by Bogue or Bogue. I am familiar with Dolor 1 or just Dolor. Means pain, by the way. Pain. This is a monstrous fragrance. It is a sweet perfume that contains things like mint and strawberry and bubblegum and some kind of dirtiness. There's also watermelon in it. It jumps off of your skin like it's trying to get away from you, this one. It is not for the faint-hearted. If you want to walk around smelling like a candy shop just landed on top of you, like the Wicked Witch of the West, maybe try Delure 2 out. It's made by, it's made by Antonio Gardoni and he's not known for making shy and retiring perfumes. Anything that he puts his hand to is going to be monstrous and this is kind of gourmandy on the next level. So yeah, super strong if you like strong stuff. On the 16th, I wore Fruit Chuli Flash by Andy Tower, another one by Andy Tower. This one was really unexpected actually because I thought it was gonna be super Fruit Chuli and really it was more about the fruit. What I got from this one was a very big osmanthus note. So it smelled apricotty, leathery, powdery, gentle in fact. I didn't really get too much patchouli, it was definitely there, but for me, the fruit part was osmanthus. So if you, if you like osmanthus perfumes and want to explore something that really showcases it very well, I would suggest Fruit Chuli Smap, Smash Flash by Andy Tower. I didn't know what the fruit was gonna be and it was unexpected that he used a floral to portray the fruit. Really liked it, quite soft, quite gentle, not too scary. Uh, not my favourite by him though. On the 17th, I wore Paisley by G.O.F. Trumper. This was a sample sent to me by one of my fragrant friends. This one to me is very nice. G.O.F. Trumper are a classic barber shop shop in the centre of London. You can still go, go and get your hair cut there, but they sell a few perfumes as well. But this one to me was like a hyped up, more vibrant version of Brute, you know? famous fragrance called Brute. I think a lot of people know that one. It's barbershop to a T without being majorly Fougere-like. It wasn't overly herbal. It was more clean, soapy. I just had a shave and I feel on top of the world fragrance. Really, really enjoyed that one. So thanks, Jim. The next one has a little bit of a story with it. On the 18th, I went out for dinner with a friend and I wore Salome by Papillon Artisan, a brand that I adore. I think that Liz's perfumes are fantastic. This one garnered a complaint from a diner that was in the restaurant, made me very self-conscious, but made me love the perfume even more. This is an unforgiving animalic jasmine. If you like your jasmines skanky and, you know, demonic, then I would definitely try out Salome by Papillon Artisan. It is the biggest, roughest, you know, femme fatale jasmine that is not afraid to shout loud and make you notice, even in a negative light. But yeah, this one is on my wish list. I, Bengal Rouge is my favourite by Papillon Artisan. Salome's always been my second favourite and now after fully wearing it and experiencing it for an evening, I need to get it. On the 19th I wore I can pronounce it right now, it's pronounced Thalo Blue and that's also by Andy Tower. This one for me is not my style at all. It's a very large um, space filling perfume that smells like the Cologne molecule, which is an aquatic marine salty type thing that's responsible for the burst of fresh fragrances in the 90s that happened like Escape by Calvin Klein, Issey Miyake, those types of things. But this to me, feels pretty much like Cologne. So this is the first thing I've tried by Andy Tower that isn't on his darker repertoire. And it's not for me. It is definitely very strong though, and it is, it travels far. And if you like that sort of thing, 
maybe it's gonna be your bag, but aquatics are one of my least favorite styles of perfume, so it didn't work for me. On the 20th, I wore Angel's Share by, by Killian, and this one, yes, gets a lot of hype, but I had a sample of it, I wanted to try it, I wanted to see if the hype was real. I can kind of understand it. For me, it's a really gorgeous, boozy tobacco, stepping into gourmand territory, and I also feel quite a lot of Christmassy spices going on as well, so it's not super unusual, but there's definitely a beauty to it that I can appreciate. I can see why people would like it. It's whiskey, um, or maybe even brandy, I don't know. The booze in it is quite gentle. It's more about a tobacco smoothness for me with gentle Christmas spices, and I enjoyed it. On the 21st, I wore Flower Moon by Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab. Not much to say about this one. I do like their perfumes that are called something Moon, but it, this one was a nondescript, faded into the sea of perfume that Black Phoenix make. I can barely talk about it because it was that unmemorable. It was just, a, it was, it was, it was a meh. No, gonna move on. On the 22nd, I wore 11 Candles in Antwerpen by the lovely Freddie Albrighton. Thoroughly enjoyed this perfume. Very inventive, has a candle wax type feeling. There is beeswax in it. There are some florals, I think it might be orchid which is of course a fantasy, possibly myrrh as well. It reminded me of the perfume version of crayons and I really, really liked it. I, I like clever perfumery in that way and it's only the second time I've ever tried a perfume that has an intentional wax note like that. So really job well done to Freddie. I, I really enjoyed it and it's probably become my favorite of the five perfumes that he has. On the 23rd, I went to see my mum, so I wore something of my own collection. I wore Sloth by Zoologist. Make no bones about it, I love this perfume. It's the fifth favourite in their lineup. It's in my top five, also made by Prin Lomros. It's just great. I mean, how do I even describe it? It's a foresty brown perfume with an acai berry note. There's lactonic things going on in there as well. There is a lot of chamomile. It's very woody and man, does it last. This one just goes and goes and goes. I could still smell it late into the evening after traveling to my mum's. I will always enjoy this one. I got myself a bottle of it this year. So Sloth by Zoologist, gonna be a thumbs up from me. On the way back from my mum's, I didn't take any perfume with me, so I wore something that I gave her last year. I wore Sandalwood by G.O.F. Trumper because she still has it in her collection and I wanted to wear it, so that's the perfume I wore that day. Such an unsung hero. The people that know about it, they know. It's a gorgeous perfume. It's so underrated, really not that expensive either. It is a rich, almost dusty brown sandalwood perfume that has a kind of bite going through the middle of something a little bit sweet. I can't quite pinpoint what it is though. There's geranium, rose, jasmine, carnation in the heart of the perfume. So there's a lot going on and it's, I have reviewed it actually in full if, if, you, if you care to go and watch that video. It's one of those ones you need to just smell to be to get involved with it really. Ultimately, it's a very good sandalwood with rough edges and it travels very far and it really garners compliments as well. On the 25th, I wore a fairy, a sorter fairy tale in Hyde Park and it is by Prin Lomros for his Strangers Perfumery line. Has become my favorite perfume from his Strangers line, not mentioning the others because he's got three lines of perfume. This is such a gorgeous springtime floral and I wore this to uh, the meetup that I did, I had a meet up with some people from my Facebook group. It got lots of compliments. People could smell it everywhere. One of the people that was at the meetup actually went ahead and bought it straight after. It's mimosa, it smells like linden blossom, multiple stemmy green florals going on. It's powdery, it's smooth. It makes me feel good. It's sunny, a real sunny, bright, makes me feel a little bit energized perfume. And it's very beautiful as well. Just great. I've got a bottle of it and I wore my, I've got a 10 mil as well and I wore that on the day and uh, people really liked it. On the 26th, I wore a sample that I got from the meetup the day before and oh my gosh, why did I have to go and fall in love with an incredibly expensive perfume? 550 pounds this perfume costs. It is called Number One and it's by Clive Christian. It's the masculine version of it. Ah, oh, I mean, 
what the hell. This one to me is like the masculine version of Samsara. It shares a lot of notes with Samsara. There's the violet, there's the ylang ylang, there's the sandalwood. The feminine version is even closer to Samsara. This is like Samsara pour homme. Why that price though? I mean, come on. Absolutely exquisite perfume, woody, elegant, smells very expensive, lasts a really long time, never gonna have it, never mind. But Samsara Port Arm is the only way I can sum it up. On the 27th, I wore another perfume by Andy Tower and it's Le de, 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 de Swiss Alps. It's the air of the, the Swiss mountains. And this one was a tricky little trickster. This one's like a jack-in-the-box waiting to come out. While it starts with a petally floral feeling that makes me think of, ah, oh, okay, this could be about mountain air and some white flowers that might bloom on mountains, maybe lower down, not high up in the snow. That's how it started, but then it reveals a deathly cumin note. Bam! Hits you like a ton of bricks. If cumin is a dodgy note for you, and for a lot of people it is, Really be careful when you try this perfume because it starts out sweetness and light and then it pulls you down a tunnel into the darkness, skanky, sweaty, dirty cumin, flying all over the place. On the 28th, I wore Isle of Demons by Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab. I've been trying a few of them, as you can tell. This one didn't work for me either. When Black Phoenix perfumes fall into a nondescript category, I kind of just disregard them. They have to jump out at me straight away because I've tried 400, possibly even 500 of their perfumes. So there's a lot that have been tossed to the side and I wanted this one to work. This one's all about a greenery. They say there's carnivorous flowers in it and some resins and I was really excited for it to be great, but it wasn't. We're just gonna leave it there. It was flat. On the 29th, I wore Florgasm by Heretic, a brand that I'm really interested in, but they're not easy to find in the UK here. This one is, oh, upon reflection, it's really just about Hedione, the Hedione molecule, which is a molecule that perfumers use to create a floral feeling in perfumes. They use it to fill gaps and bulk out things that might be missing. It's a very interesting idea, but really it's very one-noted and I would use it as a layering tool. Hedione is something that is genuinely floral smelling, but on a kind of white floral feeling. It's kind of like jasmine, but sometimes it's barely there. It's kind of transparent and that's all I got from it. And on the 30th, the last perfume I wore was another perfume by Rogue. It's Chambs Lunaires, Light Fields. I'm not sure what it means. Another tuberose, very much in the same vein as the other tuberose I tried. This one was better, it was rougher, it was a little bit darker. It didn't go to that sweet place. It also gave me poison vibes and it also gave me a little bit of grrr, you know? It gave me a little bit of fun and I enjoyed it. It was quite strong, but it's not something I think I would buy. It's another fracas-esque inspired, not inspired by, but it's kind of fracas-esque in feeling if you like that bold tuberose with not much sweetness. So that's it. Those are the 30 perfumes I wore in September and I had fun doing it. I really am excited just to start wearing my own collection now. I actually did this for August and September. So I've been sampling for two months. Time to wear my own stuff and get back to actually reviewing. Chipmunk by Zoologist will be next, by the way. Anyway, guys, I hope you liked this video. I'm Ouch Mono, trying to make the world smell better. One video at a time. I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye.